2 Kings 17, 39. Uh, Rick read 34 through 39, but we're not going to look at those passages. We're just going to look at one verse this morning. But the Lord your God shall ye, ye shall fear, and He shall deliver you out of the hand of all your enemies. You know, Cindy was in the hospital room with a lady one time in, uh, over at Highlands, and uh, she was having awful kind of trouble with her stomach ever was and she said boy I sure wish somebody would give me an enemy <laughs> and <laughs> Cindy said you want an enemy you want somebody to hate you <laughs> yeah no I want an enemy <laughs> well she got the enemy later and the whole hospital <laughs> floor had to be cleared <laughs> our deliverer is coming it seems hopeless for Israel <laughs> On many occasions, God intervened when it was hopeless and delivered them from certain defeat. When we seem to have lost all hope, all seems lost, God will deliver us. We as followers of biblical values and Jesus Christ have many enemies in this world. Satan hates us. The world hates us. Leftists hate us. Islam hates us. Evolutionists hate us. Globalists hate us, socialists hate us, abortionists hate us, homosexuals hate us, Mormons hate us. Jack, you can stop any time now. <laughs> Joe's witnesses hate us. Your friends may hate you. Your boss may not like you. Maybe you have enemies. Well, I just pointed out that you do if you're a believer in Jesus Christ. Uh... Jesus warned us that people would hate us. Matthew 24, 9. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted they shall, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. We're going to be hated because we love Jesus and follow Him. But Jesus did not leave us without hope and power. John 16, 33. In the world ye shall have tribulation. Ye shall have it. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Our deliverer will come for us when our back is against the wall. But until then, what do we do? Well, here's what we do. Yes, amen. We fear the Lord. 2 Kings 17.39 But the Lord, our, the Lord your God shall, ye shall fear. The liberal left is unhinged after the confirmation of Brett Kavanaugh yesterday, or if you are listening to this on radio last week. They want abortion as a reproductive right. They want open borders. They want same-sex marriage. They want socialism. Basically, they want a borderless, globalist, socialist society, and they'll stop at nothing to, that gets to get their way. They're marching and rallying, calling for violence and national upheaval, even today. The left has become radicalized. The line between the radical left and the moderate left has been blurred. There are no moderate leftists anymore. They preach tolerance, but they have zero tolerance for anyone who disagrees with them. Listen to them as they accuse, threaten, vilify, slander in an attempt to destroy those who oppose them. Is there any leftist calling for compromise? They don't want compromise. They want their progressive socialist agenda or else over your dead body preferably. They've asked their followers to challenge conservatives wherever they see them and use violence against them. And getting away with it on Twitter, Facebook, they can call for violence against conservatives and get away with it. And if they're not Christians, they are, uh, you know the most conservatives are Christians. Most all of them are. And if they're not Christians, they are certainly following biblical values of marriage, borders, defense, capitalism, nationalism, education, and protection of the unborn. That's a conservative. Matthew 10, 28. Fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. We better fear God, but the Lord your God ye shall fear. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. 
Psalm 9.10 And knowledge of the holy is understanding. The word fear means respect for, awe of, and awareness of Him. We basically being afraid of what He can do. <laughs> Most people don't fear God. They don't care. They don't respect the Bible. They don't, they're not in awe of God or regard Him in any way. Thou regardest not the Lord God of your fathers. They are more awed by nature than the God created it. They're, they respect actors and entertainers more than God. They fear being ridiculed more than they fear God. If we don't fear God, we're just plain, I'll just say it, stupid. Amen. Psalm 111.10 The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do His commandments. His praise endureth forever. Radical leftists have become unhinged because they do not fear God and they cannot understand biblical values that gives us our moral base and even common sense. God commands us to fear Him. That's a good place to start in life. To teach our children respect for, love for, regard for our awesome, magnificent, holy God. Amen. Amen. We're created by Him, for Him. Jesus Christ, all things were made by Him and for Him. Therefore, there is no excuse, O man, Romans tells us. There's no reasonable excuse you could give before God. When you stand before Him in judgment, you think people are going to give excuses or are they going to fall on their face in fear of the awesomeness of God as He reads the list of atrocities they've committed? All of their sins will be reviewed. That would be a terrifying place. The Bible says it's a fearful thing to fall in the hands of an angry God. It's fearsome. And... People don't care. R.G. Lee preached a great sermon uh, one time. As a matter of fact, he preached it several times. Sinners in the hands of an angry God. And it talks about that passage where people are slipping into judgment. And he described it in detailed, graphic ways where people are slipping, sliding into hell and trying to kick against it and grab onto anything when it's too late. It's scary. It starts out with Naboth had a vineyard. Remember Naboth had a vineyard? And Ahab wanted it. And he pouted and cried. And Jezebel said, what's the matter, honey? I want Naboth's vineyard and he won't sell it to me. I'll get it for you, sweetie. And had Naboth killed. Ahab and Jezebel. Payday. Cain. Actually, the title of the sermon is Payday Someday. Payday is coming. Jezebel was eaten by the dogs. The dogs wouldn't eat her filthy hands who did sin and her feet that led her into sin. Or her head that thought of sin. The dogs wouldn't eat. Even the dogs wouldn't eat that. Her hands that engaged in sinful practices. Her feet that walked her to the temples of Baal. And her head that thought of all the wickedness. The dogs wouldn't eat that. Listen, I watched a cat eat a bird last week. They'll eat anything. I was appalled. My cat came to the back door with two legs sticking out of its mouth. And that was a lizard. And it started to meow and say, look how, oops, it got away. The cat was going to meow and say, look at me, look at me, look what I got. And the lizard got away and the race was on. And the lizard escaped. Then I said to the cat, Oh, big boy, aren't you? What do you think about it now? Where's your lizard? <laughs> yes. It said, I will scratch your eyes out. No. <laughs> That's what it did. Animals like to show you their catch. They're so proud. Listen. It's... They're going to be caught one day by God in the jaws of God's judgment and wrath. That's what I thought of, that poor little bird. Good for the lizard, it escaped, but the poor little bird did not escape. 
I saw the cat with a bird in its mouth. Next thing I saw was one feather. And it ate it all. And awful. Listen, judgment comes and it's awful. It comes unexpectedly. But we should fear the Lord our God and Him only shall you serve. Secondly, 2 Kings 39 continues, 1739, But the Lord your God, ye shall fear the Lord your God. The Lord is a personal God. He is our God. Jesus is my Savior. And when I put my trust in Him, He belongs to me. I am His and He is mine. I serve Him and Him alone. But people today already have a God. Thank you. I don't need you, God. You don't need to be my God. I already have one. That's the God of self, selfishness, and self-righteousness. They love and serve self and self alone. Now we're in a battle here, people. A biblical values versus anti-biblical values. That's what it's all about. The radical left hates conservative Christian values so much that listen to this story. They, uh, there's a man named Jackson Costco arrested recently for giving out the personal information including addresses and social security numbers of conservatives in Washington and around the nation. He was part of a plan along with many others. He's been caught and arrested. But he was part of a plan along with many others to organize kill teams. Kill teams. With the intent to kill President Trump, poison congressmen, murder top officials in the Pentagon, and to harass and invade the homes and murder conservatives around the nation. You think just the arrest of one man has stopped this? No. This group has the approval of most all radical leftists. Celebrities in the entertainment industry have decried conservative Christian values for years. But now, they're obsessed with it. They're calling for rallies, marches, and violence against conservatives that they call the bane of society holding back the world from progress. I knew I was important. I'm holding back the world from progress. The radical left will take it to another level, and that level is violence. They already are. Remember that God judged the world in Noah's day because they had become so violent. Amen. This is the natural progression of sin. It starts out subtle and it, it evolves into violence when it reaches its apex. God is not their God. They don't know Him and the result is sin. James 1.14 But every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust and enticed. James 1.15 When lust hath conceived, it brings forth sin. Sin, when it is finished, brings forth death. Lust for what I want brings sin. And sin eventually leads to death. Eternal death. If sin is not repented of, forgiven by God, through faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, it leads to eternal death. Sin will progress. And when it's conceived, it brings, when lust conceived, it brings sin. When sin is finished, death, judgment is all that's left. You know, remember Cain slew Abel? It started out as jealousy, then anger, then violence, then death. All because God was not the God of Cain, but self was Cain's God. I've told you a thousand times. Natives always put on the top of a totem pole the face of a human because that's really who they worship themselves. They come up of gods of their own invention and imaginations as the Bible says. Oh God, help us. Keep us from loving ourselves more than we love You. God is the creator of the universe and wants to know You personally. Amen. That's how great our God is. But the Lord, your God. People say they're atheists, but everybody has a God. There's a God of atheism. That's the ultimate God of self. There's a God of self. There's the God of entertainment. There's the, the God of personalities. There's the God of wealth. 
whatever is more important than the God of the Bible, the Creator God, is your God. Listen, God is the Creator, the biblical God is the Creator God, the Creator of the entire universe. And He wants to know you. Colossians 3, 4 says, For Christ, who is our life. The Apostle Paul said in Philippians 3, 10, that His goal in life, here's, here's Paul's goal for his life, and I think it should be the goal of every Christian, of course. It should be the goal of every person in the world. Here's your goal and a purpose for living. I don't have any purpose. I don't even know why I should get up in the morning. Here's your purpose. Here's your meaning for life. What is the meaning to life? I'm going to crawl, a mountain, crawl up a mountain in Tibet to find out the answer to life. Some guru is going to tell me. He's going to say to you, uh, you're crazy. And I'm crazy. It's snowing and cold. Here is the goal in life, the purpose of life, that I may know Him and the power of His resurrection. Amen. You know Christ, you're going to be resurrected. You're going to have a life eternal. This is life eternal that I may know Him. The power that I may know Him and the power of His resurrection. Resurrection power. Paul recognized that that's the greatest power ever unleashed. Resurrection power. And the world today just says, big deal. Big deal. We need to be progressive. We need to love one another. After all, the Bible is all about love. Uh, no, it's not. The Bible is all about judgment. Amen. Right. Judgment for sin and the warning. What was that you said this morning, Rick? Bible. Basic instructions before leaving earth. Basic because we're sinners. We need a Savior. The Bible is about the judgment for sin and salvation through Jesus Christ. Yes, God loves us. But He, that love, will not prevent you from being judged. You love your children. Do you give them cotton candy when they murder somebody? And pat them on the back and say, I love you. You're the most wonderful child. Well, that's according to who they murder, I guess. You're the most wonderful child I've ever had. I don't even have to forgive you. You don't ask, ask for forgiveness. You're just A number one. They rob a bank, commit murder. Go into a school and shoot 27 children dead. Are you going to give them a son? You kill 27 people, that's all right. I'm going to give you a brand new Corvette and... Here, here's $1,000 in cash every day. Go and have fun. That's what the world thinks God is. No judgment for sin. No penalty for sin. It's not going to happen. God's going to... I'll be up there with Uncle Tom, Brother Bill, one day. He's looking down on us. Even though he drank and swarped and cussed and fought and killed. And he's in heaven though. He's looking down on us. Sorry, Brother Bill is in the pits of hell for rejecting Jesus Christ. That I may know Him and the power of His resurrection. That's the secret to life. Thirdly, our Deliverer is coming. Our Deliverer is coming. Here's the best part. 2 Kings 17, 39. And He shall deliver you out of the hand of all your enemies. He's talking to Israel here. But He's talking to you. He's talking to all of us. God will deliver us out of, out of the hand. Our enemies have a hold on us. They've caught us. We're in their grasp. We're caught. It seems hopeless. Cancer catches up to you. Gets a hold of you. It seems hopeless. You're in a car wreck and you're broken up. Confined to a hospital bed. Seems hopeless. Our enemies got a hold of you now. God said to the Jews, to Israel, He shall deliver you out of the hand of all your enemies. They were right in the grasp of their enemies. The enemies had them. All the advantage was to the enemies of Israel. But God delivered them out of the hand of the enemies when it looks hopeless. In the mouth of the cat, you can be 
delivered. The radical left is on the offensive. They're well-funded, organized, and fueled by hate. Many are calling for the conservative... Cons many conservatives are calling for us to fight back. Listen. We are not going to use violence. We are not filled with hate. In fact, we're not called to just fight, but to stand. We have the everlasting gospel of Jesus Christ and the truth of God by which we stand and defend ourselves. And that's going to cause a fight, isn't it? <laughs> but we stand. There's a line we won't cross. You know, we used to have lines drawn in the sand in America. We will not do this. We will not uh, allow our borders to be invaded. We will stand for the Constitution. There's a line drawn in the sand. That line has gone backwards and backwards. <laughs> so pretty soon there is... Where's the line at? I can't see it. It's been obliterated because people walked all over it. Listen. We may get in the hand of the enemy, but God comes and takes us from the hand of our enemy. He shall deliver you out of the hand. And once God has us, we are safe and secure. John 10, 28. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. God can pluck us out of the enemy's hand, but no enemy can pluck us out of God's hand. Amen. My Father which gave them me is greater than all. No man's able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. You're in Jesus' hand. You're in the Father's hand. Let me see an enemy get you out of that. You know, as kids we wrestled and our big brother or our big cousin would get us in a hold. We were just finished. We couldn't get out. That's the way Satan, once God has us, there's no way to get us out. That's eternal security, people. Amen. That's eternal security. Our Father is greater than all. No enemy can pluck us from the grasp of God. 2 Kings 17.39 He shall deliver you out of the hand of all your enemies. All. A-double-L means half, a third, one-fourth, ten percent. All means all. It leaves out none. He shall deliver you. Deliver means to make good on a promise. The post office delivers mail, sometimes. The pitcher delivers the ball to the plate. The trucking company delivers goods. The gas company delivers gas. The electric company delivers electricity. He shall deliver you. That's another personal promise to His people only. This is for His people. He said this to Israel, His people. He says it to you today. You're His people. It is personal. It's powerful. How can we be delivered? How can we overcome hate in a fallen, hate-filled world? We have already overcome, I tell you. We have already overcome. It's not how can we overcome. We've overcome already because of the cross of Jesus Christ. We've already been delivered from sin and the penalty of sin. Remember, this is the enemy's world, though. We've been delivered from the penalty of sin. And we're going to be delivered one day in the presence of God. But God, remember, while we're here, we're not of this world. So I ask, why would we fight for that which we cannot keep? Now, conservatives say, some conservatives say, we've got to fight to get back America. I say, we fight for the gospel. Why would we fight? Because the gospel we can keep. We've got it forever. Why would we fight for that which we cannot keep? Why would we fight for a land that we're gonna, we can't keep it anyway? We have a better kingdom whose founder and maker is God. It's crystal clear that the left will not be satisfied until all Christian conservatives are gone. At this point in history, it is becoming increasingly evident that conservative Christians are not fit for this world anymore. Now here's the whole point of this message. Someone is coming for us. Amen. Conservative Christians, the onslaught is coming. As Israel was overwhelmed by their enemies, they called on their God to deliver them. 
To quote the line of the song as I sing, Our Deliverer is coming. Our Deliverer is standing by. He will deliver you and me from, and He will deliver you and me and all those that trust in Him. He shall deliver you out of the hand of all your enemies. He shall deliver you. You know, someone is certainly coming for us. The radical left is coming for us. Here's the point of the message. The radical left is coming for us. Our enemies are coming for us. But praise God, our deliverer is coming also. And when the conservative Christians are gone, they'll have their world and their man called the Antichrist. But it doesn't work out too well for them, does it? If you read Revelation chapter 6 through 18, Amen. God's going to take us, the bane of society, they call. One day, we're going to be gone. And then they'll have their world the way they want it. It's going to be set up perfectly for them. They'll have their leader, they'll have their abortion, same sex marriage, all they want of it. But it ends in them calling for the rocks to fall on them. That doesn't sound very happy place, does it? That's not very progressive. Unless you like rocks falling on you. Someone is coming for us. Radical leftists are coming for us. Radical Islam is coming for us. Globalists are coming for us. And Jesus, our deliverer, is coming for us. And God is coming for them in judgment. I would rather have Jesus coming for me to take me to glory than God coming for me to, to take me to judgment, wouldn't you? Amen. Hold on. Stand strong. Someone is coming for you. I know what you're thinking. Hope Jesus gets here first. <laughs> Amen. Well, praise God, He will. And deliver us from the wrath of God because the wrath of God is coming you know these things are going to get pretty bad things may get really bad but we will not go through the tribulation when it's just hell on earth so I advise you as Christians hold on not to your salvation that's already secured that's already been bought and paid for but hold on in your faith your faithfulness to Christ be faithful unto death and I'll give thee a crown of life Amen. Hold on. Stand strong. Why? Someone is coming for you. And His name is Jesus. Our Deliverer is coming. Our Deliverer is standing by. Let's pray.